I'm Dana Jacobson from CBS Saturday Morning. Welcome to The Dish. Today's topic may be the ultimate crowd favorite. We're talking all about pasta. We head to Brooklyn to meet the chef behind two of the most coveted Italian restaurants in the tri-state area, and to Italy for the inside look at how one popular pasta and broth creation is made. But first, we head to a Michelin-starred restaurant in Manhattan's Flatiron District, where one chef is serving up cuisine based on the Emilia-Romagna region of Italy. Chef Stefano Secchi has created more than just another New York Italian restaurant. We don't take ourselves very serious, but we take, you know, what we do very serious and pasta being really important for us. All homemade. Everything, yep. At Resdora, which loosely translates to nonna or grandmother, yeah, one, adunta, two. he's brought a piece of them Grazie. and Italy to New York. This is one of those ragus that I made with the nonnas at Austria Juice Team many times, with like Laura Morandi, and it's one of those things that, wow, you just want to kind of sit and think about it, right? So, no, I want to eat more. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to sit no and think about it. I want to eat more. All right. The tagliolini, served with ragù modenese, is one of around two dozen pastas on the Resdora menu. Giuseppe, indietro di quel cacio, c'è un gnocco frito, eh? With Secchi leading diners on a gastronomic journey through the Emilia-Romagna region of Italy. You need to grab a gnocco frito because okay. these, are, these are still piping hot. You have mortadella oh there from God. Bologna. Do I just take a bite of this? Yeah, I mean, here's what I do. Um, it's gonna be messy. It's hot, but you, okay. you want to fold it over like this okay. and then, and like a nice little pocket. Ooh. Brava. That's good. I was lucky enough to get a private tour. A lot of the dishes are just based on like memories that I have either growing up, going to Italia and or working there. Like these black truffle lobster girasole. We used to go to Rimini and we used to take the train there and you see sunflowers on the way. And what would you eat? You'd eat seafood, it right? It literally so, is. That's a little sunflower. Yeah, it should be like a little sunflower. So the idea is you have that black truffle with the beautiful lobster and a little bit of lobster stock to make the sauce. I love that it's a little work of art too. Mm -hmm. There was also the uovo raviolo di Nino Bergese, a tribute to the chef who made the original dish famous in the region. This seasonal variation is topped with white truffle and brown butter, filled with ricotta and egg yolk. Like the wow. farm fresh egg inside. Yeah. And it's dark orange. Like We have the best eggs you can get your hands on. You have worked tirelessly to get these eggs. Eight, nine months to figure out how to get um, the right eggs. We actually get them from the south now, believe it or not, from Arkansas. Come on, the matcha gramigna, guys. Put it order fire, yeah? Secchi calls the gramigna giallo e verde the sleeper. <laughs> served with slow-braised sausage ragu in bianco. Far more decadent is Resdora's contemporary version of agnolini, filled with 24-month-old prosciutto, prosciutto, mortadella, and pork shoulder topped with Parmigiano sauce, with the signature cheese also aged for two years. And for us, finished with a century-old aceto balsamico. Oh, that balsamic. It just brings out a flavor. I'm gonna give you another one because you're gonna ask me for another one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just gonna reach over and take that it. Works <laughs> that works too, that works too. And then there's the one dish Seki says he can never take off the menu. Grandma walking through forest in Emilia based off Sundays spent eating at the homes of local nonas. It's capoletti pasta with braised and sauteed leeks, parmigiano, and a porcini mushroom base. This nonna, we used to go out in her backyard and find like porcini, and then she would roast porcini, braise leeks, and then we would make this capoletti is based off the Romagna region in Emilia Romagna. Those are, you know, memories that you put together, you're like, oh, how do you find a way to incorporate into a story? How do you make that story into a pasta? Mm -hmm. Has she ever had this pasta? I'm, I'm trying to get her to come over. Oh. <laughs> come over. Can you tell, can you like, can you, <laughs> no, can you, no. yeah, please? Come over. I'm gonna come send over. this <laughs> How much fun is it for you to create these taste memories? Amazing, right? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, <laughs> Your eyes just said it. If you're gonna do this as a job, then, then you should probably just be all in. If not, then why do it? Nick, you got a second course, Bora Reale Fetunta together, yeah? Secchi grew up in Texas, one of three kids born to immigrant parents, including an Italian father. While they ran a restaurant and sent him back to Italy each summer, Secchi says he didn't always see food as his calling. My parents had me working really early. I would be like 
basketball, football practice, or baseball, or whatever, and then like I would have to go right to work. Like, I yeah. could never finish practice, and like that makes you bitter. I mean, I'm not going <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> and like you don't see that back then, but now I I can't thank my parents enough. He says it all changed when he graduated high school, enrolled in the Culinary Institute of America, and moved to New York City. I interned, externed in the city here, cooking, and that's when I when I was finally around places where people were like really taking it serious is when I got fired up. And then I was eating around a lot, and I still never tasted the food that I'd eaten in Italia for so long. So that's where he headed, living in Modena for the next three years, learning his craft from both nonas and masters. You should pay homage to these people that have been doing it for so long and so well and respect it. You should learn how the basics are done. We talk about contemporary pasta girasole or classic pasta gramigna, tagliolini, agnolini to an extent, uovo raviolo. These are the classics, right? And so learn how the classics are done and then you can be contemporary and find ways to like work. Speaking of that girasole, Good, right? chef was kind enough to give me a quick lesson in creating the Resdora favorite. <laughs> See where, where there's an edge? Pinch. Pinch. And while I didn't exactly show his <laughs> promise, <laughs> mine's not looking as pretty as yours. No, non è vero. How many points am I supposed Should to get? Should be have? six all in. Seki, like the Nonas back in Modena, <laughs> takes an obvious yeah. pride in the traditions he learned. Grazie. Perfecto. <laughs> well, that's a beauty. Look at that. And continues oh, to pass cool. on, be it by touch or taste. Grazie. Grazie. Life is short. When you find out what you want to do, start becoming obsessed with it. Things become uh, pretty cool. Is that where you are right now? I hope, yeah. I mean, I'm obsessed like, and pretty cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dana, it's the best business. Your job is to make people happy every day. Put food in people's mouths where people are like, oh my God. Like, you're out of the kitchen and you're in the dining room and you're just watching like customers talk to each other and they don't even say a word and they just shake their head and smile. That's all you need, right? That's our job is just to make people happy. I mean, it's crazy but that's cool it's incredibly cool up next a taste of tortellini in italy italy is home to all things pasta from unique shapes to delectable fillings and even the flavorful sauces we put on top seth don't takes us to florence and bologna where he learns how to perfect the making of a classic tortellini. It's not from a terrine, but it's good. I'm Seth Doan in Italy, sampling tortellini in brodo. That's broth in Italian. It's traditionally a comfort food for the holidays, but it's welcome in any season. Mm. If I have to take one dish to a desert island for the rest of my life, this would be it. That's saying something for Rolando Beramendi, a chef and cookbook author. Did you put tortellini in brodo in your book? No, I didn't, because it's so complicated that I think it would be very difficult to translate. <laughs> it's incredible. Even he leaves it to the experts. That means for a good 30 years, he's come to Trattoria Camillo, a four-generation family restaurant in Florence, where they make it look simple. As Leonardo da Vinci said, simplicity is the ultimate art of sophistication. First, owner Chiara Maziero gets the pasta or sfoglia as thin as possible. Then there's the filling and the flourish. And we make the triangle, close at the point. This one comes down. Tortellino, perfetto. She's made a few tortellini in her time. Just how many? Qualche <laughs> milione. Some millions. <laughs> and then you've got the filling here. Her recipe for the filling, ground pork and turkey, mortadella, prosciutto, and Parmesan cheese, was her father's. He was from Bologna, which lays claim to this pasta. And where it fills stomachs, storefronts, and has taken on almost mythical status. One of the tall tales of Tortellini is that an innkeeper spied on Venus, the goddess of love, through a keyhole and then created a pasta in the shape of her navel. Today, the pasta itself is lustworthy, and aficionados say there's only one way to truly appreciate it. You worked so hard to develop this sfoglia with the eggs and that filling. The only way that you exalt all those flavors by putting it in brodo. 
At Bologna's Paolo Azzi and Sons, the skilled hands of Eta Grandi can turn out 350 tortellini an hour. Quindi si deve sentire solo il ripieno. You don't want to taste the pasta, you want to taste the filling. Esatto. The Bolognese are religious about their tortellini. Owner Francesco Bonaga told us they had some of theirs hand-delivered to Pope Francis. Here he said you can see the bishop explaining to Pope Francis that tortellini must be cooked in broth. Yes, he added, with great attention. The tortellini is going to absorb all the beautiful succulence of that broth. Rolando Beramendi explained the broth, vegetables and hearty cuts of beef, all strained before serving, is essential to the balance of this specialty. What's more important in this equation, the tortellini or the broth? That's a tough question. It's almost like to be or not to be, right? This comforting dish is so simple yet complex that some believe the central ingredient deserves to be celebrated as a hero. There are several Italian restaurants in the New York City area serving up fine pastas. But Chef Missy Robbins' two restaurants, Lilia and Missy, are often at the top of pasta lovers' lists. The legendary chef showed our Jeff Glore how she makes her decadent dishes. We really set out to, to make something that would feel timeless. For one. Missy Robbins grew up an ocean away from the focus of her book, Pasta the spirit and craft of Italy's greatest food. A Jewish girl raised in a kosher household in Connecticut. She took a transformational trip to Italy in her 20s. After serving as an executive chef in Chicago and New York, she opened her first restaurant, Lilia, in Brooklyn in 2016. That was followed two years later by Missy. At both spots, dough turns into art. You list 45 different pasta shapes in the book. And that, if I'm understanding this correctly, is just scratching the surface? To totally. I mean, I, I, there are thousands of pasta shapes. And also, they get intertwined with different names. I mean, there are 400 things that are called ravioli alone. There's 400 things, you know, my tortelli looks totally different than my neighbor's tortelli. One of the big things you talk about in the book, everybody, I think, knows that making fresh pasta can be challenging yes. and laborious. Cooking pasta is challenging as well. Oh yeah. If done the right way. Yes. You know, there's not just like boiling the pasta. It's like, how is your water salted? Is it salted enough? Never ever put oil in your water. Please don't ever put oil on your water because you'll never be able to get to the next point, which is marriage and the marriage ceremony, which is really kind of it. So. You always want to finish your pasta in the sauce. And don't drain the water? Never drain the water. Why? Ne so when you cook pasta in water, some of that starch comes out, and that becomes part of, of the sauce. Pasta water is key. It's an ingredient. Just one of the many lessons Robin shares from a career and life that in the past several years has seen both her greatest triumphs and her biggest challenges. She was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2017. Now recovered, she also totally changed her lifestyle in her 40s. You've talked openly, you've written about this, you've talked about it, about your struggles with weight. Yeah, I was 40 plus pounds more than I am today. Um, and I was unhealthy, like I wasn't breathing correctly. I, I just didn't feel good. Um, and it's not healthy, and I, it's really like no other kind of addictive behavior. My vice has always been food, ironically. Um, I had really bad sort of tasting habits in the kitchen. Her new diet does include, yes, less pasta, which doesn't mean dish segments can't be occasional splurge opportunities. Okay, so we have, I'm gonna start with veg. Yep. Um, grilled broccoli, sharp provolone, garlic breadcrumbs. That was followed by beans and grilled escarole, leeks with anchovy vinaigrette, parsley, and pistachio, and artichokes braised and grilled topped with mint salsa verde. I used to love artichokes when I was a kid. So these are first cooked in 
olive oil and wine and a lot of aromatics, and then they're grilled when you order them. The sauce is amazing. And the mint's so fresh. You're going to eat every single thing? Why not? That's amazing. Do you, do you want, want a little you plate? Want me to? No, I want you to. Which was good because we were just getting started. Next was whipped ricotta on grilled sourdough, served with roasted mushrooms, preserved in olive oil. This looks like it could change your life. It doesn't matter what I put with it. People are not ordering it because of the vegetable, they're ordering it because of that. 100%. And it's like the most Instagram dish I've ever seen. Wow. Moving on to pasta, we have tortelli. Uh, this is a spinach and mascarpone filled pasta, finished with brown butter. There was also Meze Rigatoni with her signature 30 clove sauce. Chickpea pepperdelli with rosemary, parmesan, and lemon. Bucatini with induya. And gnocchi sardi, or malaritas, with a fennel, saffron, and pork sausage sauce. And this is another pasta shape, though, that we talked about. We're like, yeah. Not Each a lot of people one know. Of those, it's similar to other ones, but yeah. not. Each one of those is done by hand on a little board. E Every single one. Each one of these. Each That is not done by a machine. That is done by a human. Their work is worth wow. it. Wow. Wow, that smile. <laughs> I think we just found your favorite. I think that is my favorite. My favorite, too. While you won't find it listed on the menu, the only entree available at Missy is Bisteca Fiorentina. It's marinated in garlic and rosemary and finished with olive oil, lemon, and fennel pollen. All that was followed by a presentation of seven different kinds of gelato, one featuring olive oil. Olive oil ice cream. Yes. Gelato. We also had chocolate, chocolate chip, pistachio, espresso, fior de latte, and hazelnut. Though for me, it was all about the mint chocolate chip. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fresh mint. Oh, my gosh. This is novel and really cool, but that's my favorite. All right, we'll keep going. We did. Our feast was accompanied by a cocktail that's become one of Robin's specialties. What is this? This is the Missy Spritz. This is the Missy Spritz? Yes. To so pasta. Thank you so much for having me. Are you gonna try the steak? Oh yeah. After the break, we take a closer look at the plethora of pasta shapes. This is the dish. Whether you like penne or rigatoni, linguine or fettuccine, there is truly a pasta shape for everyone. Faith Saley shows us the possibilities are endless in a segment first seen on CBS Sunday Morning. Pasta, delicious, ubiquitous, groovy. In the world of pasta, it's a kind of a mirror world. It's the other side of the, the looking glass. Everything is absolutely groovy. This one is called Capelletti, little hats. Architect Georges Legendre finds pasta's curves a delicious departure from the right angles of the everyday world. If you compare it to the built environment, everything's squarish, more or less, you know, the tables, the chairs, the buildings. He says one of life's simplest foods is far more complex than most of us realize. I find that a lot of the shapes have amazingly beautiful diagrams, you might call them, which might inspire you into designing, say, a spiraling museum ramp, which is as beautiful in a way as, say, trottole. Very well designed to accommodate sauces because it's tubular. Legendre uh, spent two years collecting and organizing every type of pasta he could find, 92 different shapes, and captured them all in a book called Pasta by Design. We use mathematics to design buildings. You know, we've done a bridge, we've done artwork, and now we've done pasta. Each fold is sort of lovingly designed. Using computer programs, he describes the design and shape of pastas you might have heard of, like, say, spaghetti, to those you certainly haven't. Take the fisarmonice, named after the Italian word for accordion. 
or the strozzapretti, Italian for priest strangler. It's really just trigonometry. One of the crazy things about this project, um, mathematically speaking, is that everything is done with two functions. For Legendre, the mathematical functions sine and cosine cook up a pretty interesting recipe in terms of design. I would say the invisible mathematics of pasta are absolutely staggering because they deal with so dynamic things that we can't even fathom. Air flows, pressure, temperature. I mean, these are things that are very, very abstract. And if all of this seems a little rich, the design of pasta really does matter, says Jacob Kennedy, London chef and author of The Geometry of Pasta. Does a different shape of pasta have a different taste? Different shapes of pasta will interact differently, in particular with their sauce, and they will give you a different experience. Tortellini, for example, are lovely in a creamy sauce that can coat them. They've got a lot of nooks and crannies for the sauce to fill, and you can really feel the shape with your tongue kind of as you're eating it. Tortellini, legend has it, was modeled after a certain anatomical feature of one of the most famous women of the Italian Renaissance, Lucrezia Borgia. The tale is that uh, Lucrezia Borgia stopped overnight for a romantic tryst in, a, in an inn, and the innkeeper was a bit besotted with her, and he went up to snoop at her room and he looked through the, through the keyhole, and all he could see was, a, was her navel. So he ran downstairs. <laughs> I made a pasta in its shape so you can remember it. That's fantastic! So, the next time you're savoring your spaghettini, take a moment to digest its design. It is a miracle of simplicity and complexity that, that happens every day. For more stories like these and live coverage of breaking news 24-7, stream us right here on CBS News. I'm Dana Jacobson. We'll see you next time for another helping of the dish.